last week I announced my pregnancy on here and I said that I would make a video dedicated to my hyperemesis journey. So I'll talk a bit about how I'm feeling, how I'm doing, how I'm dealing with it, medicine and all of that. This is my first pregnancy. Of course, I've heard of hyperemesis and I just assumed it wouldn't happen to me because why would I expect that to happen to me, right? I will admit, even though it is a bit embarrassing in some ways, you know this whole thing about when people talk about how difficult it is to be pregnant or how difficult it is to have a baby or something and this thought is in your head that it's not gonna be that hard for me or it's not gonna be that way or it's not like we'll be managed, whatever, it'll be fine. I didn't realize how present that was for me when it came to pregnancy because I never thought pregnancy would be extraordinarily difficult for me. And just as a disclaimer in this whole video, I'm not saying I have it the worst because I know people have it way worse than me. I don't even have, you know, the worst kind of hyperemesis. I'm just gonna say that pretty early on. But my brain always made me believe that because I am a pretty like strong and fit, healthy person, I just didn't think pregnancy would be difficult for me because my body was well prepared for it. Because throughout this year or <laughs> 2023 when I was kind of preparing to start trying for a baby I was working out pretty regularly and uh, taking a lot of walks and all of that I was trying to you know prepare my body for a difficult journey because I know pregnancy is difficult but I just thought I would get the regular difficulty and not you know a different kind of difficulty mode and for some reason I don't know why my brain has just always had this idea that I would struggle with conceiving not with pregnancy I just always thought like Statistically, why wouldn't I be the one to struggle, you know? And I was kind of prepared to have to deal with it, but I didn't. And I feel very lucky that I didn't have to struggle to conceive, but I just was not prepared <laughs> that pregnancy would be so difficult because none of my friends really had like hyperemesis with like vomiting and stuff like this far into pregnancy. I'm 22 weeks pregnant and I still have hyperemesis. Okay, let's move on to how hyperemesis uh, presents itself for me. So this is what the NHS websites say about a sickness in pregnancy, sometimes called morning sickness. Around eight out of every 10 pregnant women are sick, vomiting, or both during pregnancy. This does just not just happen in the morning. No, that is an absolute myth. For most women, this improves their stuff completely by around week weeks 12 to 20 although for some women it can last longer sorry i'm not very <laughs> good at reading out loud some pregnant women experience very bad nausea and vomiting they might be sick many times a day and be unable to keep food or drink down which can impact on their daily life so high premises for me it has lasted from week five i would say and it's still going on still going strong week 22 so as you can imagine that's a long time to be dealing with vomiting and stuff it just appeared out of nowhere felt very sick vomited several times times a day. Nausea wise, I always feel nauseous. I don't know what it's like to not feel nauseous or not feel worried that I'm gonna throw up because I'm like feeling unwell. I need an escape route at all times, you know? I need to know like when am I, where am I gonna go throw up if I need to throw up now? And it's uh, kind of stressful, <laughs> like going out and about. Not nice right now. It so quickly goes from being nauseous to throwing up and oh my god, I'm I like talking about this makes me want to throw up. Obviously, like content warning, I'm talking about throwing up in this video. I'm not gonna go into details about what throwing up is like or whatever, but goddamn, I am so weak to everything right now. And talking about my own sickness is making me feel sick. But also, what can make it worse is if like someone is playing music and it's really annoying music, loud music. I don't like music with like a lot of things going on, like a lot of noise and stuff. It makes me feel sick. Noise that like, just getting overstimulated in general, not very good. <laughs> Makes me feel sick. Temperatures, of course. Smells, and of course my si sense of smell is heightened right now and smells definitely, like, it's it's a struggle. I can't take the food waste bin out. I can't do anything. <laughs> like I can't open the fridge. Everything needs to be sealed <laughs> in the fridge. I can't deal with smells. And oh my God, this is just making me want to throw up. I hope I can fucking get through this video. I didn't expect to struggle just talking about it. Well, it is a struggle when people ask me how, I'm go how it's going though, but also because whenever I say, I'm feeling fine, then I love be violently gagging 30 minutes later. And movement, sometimes I can't even walk from the dinner table to the couch after eating. A lot of times I feel like lying down after eating because it feels like it'll just make 
my body like relax and just be like, please don't throw up. And sometimes, you know, three steps is too much. I'll be like doing something and then I'll need my partner to come and finish it because I need to go and sit down. And it's so frustrating. I feel like a lot of people get the privilege of being able-bodied just thrown in their faces when they get pregnant because you're not used to needing people to do shit for you or you're not used to your body just not functioning the way you're expecting it to. And then suddenly it's like, oh shit, this is what it's like <laughs> to like be sick or be chronically ill or be disabled or whatever. I'm not saying you get a good perspective on it, but at least you get to dip your toes into like, oh, this is what it feels like to not be able-bodied all the time. I am fucking privileged. Like an example, this morning I was scraping my car because it was icy as hell. Icy as hell. That was such a bad, wow, okay. Never mind. That was too much. I threw up. As I said in my pregnancy announcement video, eating triggers it, but also not eating triggers it. Like getting hungry, actually getting hungry and feeling that your stomach is like empty. That's terrible. Don't do that. I used to always, I like having breakfast, but I also just really like having my morning coffee before having breakfast, like starting off the day with just coffee. Now, if I have coffee before I have breakfast, I'll throw up. So I always have to eat breakfast before I do anything else, like before I do shit, like often before I even get dressed. I'll often have some cereal. Like I said, I eat a lot of kids cereal. So not the healthiest kind, but whatever goes down the hatch, that's what I'll eat. I haven't been one of those people who really need to eat something before they get out of bed though. That's only happened like maybe three times. Most of the time I'm fine getting out of bed and getting the food myself without throwing up. In the beginning, up until maybe eight to 10 weeks, having frequent meals and eating a lot of fruit helped. So I was basically eating all day, like maybe every one or two hours, I was eating something small. This was right before Christmas. I was eating a lot of like clementines and stuff, but suddenly that did not help. And also I just don't feel like eating. I'm so sick of eating all the time. I don't have an appetite and I just feel so sick of food. Food is so limited to me right now, even more than it has been. And also eating fruit now kind of makes me feel sick. So yeah, definitely after 12 weeks, it just did not help anymore. I just feel sick all the time. And I always feel like whenever I've e I'm eating, I, it just feels risky. Well, that's been like, it's been like that the whole time, of course. Every time I eat, I'm like, will I be able to keep this down? And I know that I'm super lucky because most of the time I do keep the food down. I only throw up like one to three times a day. Some people throw up like 50 times a day. So I, it's not that bad. It's not like I don't get any nutrients, nutrients in me. It's not like I don't get enough food in me. I'm fine. So I'm not saying it's the worst thing ever. It's just, it's still very much impacting my life. <laughs> but when we're talking about eating, it is difficult. It's very difficult. In the beginning, dinner used to be a huge problem. Like the biggest problem that's when I usually would throw up or most often would throw up during the day it's still difficult but now like other meals are also difficult because I read that hot food could be more difficult than cold food but even eating toast uh, or like cold bread, everything is risky. As I said, fruit can even make me throw up. So nothing is safe, like a smoothie is risky. Making smoothies was my like go-to way of making sure that, well, at least I got like some good stuff in me, but I'm not making as many smoothies anymore. <laughs> even stuff like yogurt, which I just did not expect would ever become a problem. It makes me feel sick. Nothing is safe. So yeah, I've been eating a lot of cereal and bland foods like noodles, you know, not the spicy kind. And also what's good about uh, cereal is that I get some liquid in because for the first whatever, how long, many weeks I could not drink water because it would make me throw up. Liquids in general were risky and I just, I was scared to drink too much. So cereal seemed like a good idea. Now it's easier to drink, but I definitely just miss being able to drink a lot of water <laughs> in one sitting. My appetite is terrible. It's really difficult to even plan meals because well, like every day after work, pretty much we have to go to the store and like just buy whatever I want for dinner because it's really hard to plan. And I've been one of these people who like planned out at least a few days ahead, preferably a week because it's, you know, good for in general, like reducing food waste and also for budgeting and all of that. And then now I can't, I can't plan what I'm gonna eat for dinner tomorrow. I need to see what I feel like tomorrow. I had these hopes and dreams for a healthy pregnancy where I could eat all of these good foods and I could work out. And instead I'm eating fucking children's cereal every day and I'm donating money to the gym cause I can't go. But hopefully I'm gonna try and return to the gym pretty soon and I'll see how it goes. I'm really hoping it goes well. It makes me so sad. I really wanna work out. And also like I'm 22 weeks pregnant. I'm gonna have to deal with childbirth at some point and I wanna be as best prepared 
prepared as I can. And I don't know like if my body is gonna give me other issues like physical aches and pains and stuff like that. And I just wanna prevent it as much as possible. And that's why I was on, a, on such a good roll with working out and moving my body and all of that. And now, oh my God, we have a small hill up to our house and walking up that hill, I have thrown up so many times, like right outside here so many times I can't even count. Well, at least I take vitamins. So I get some good stuff in me. And if anyone's wondering, I'm not craving any food that I can't eat. So it's not like I'm wanting all these foods that pregnant people can't eat. I'm not craving any food. <laughs> also, did y'all know that a lot of people post disgusting looking food on social media? So scrolling social media is dangerous now. It's not actually that it looks disgusting. It just doesn't look good. And the sight of food does not please me right now anyway. So people posting their homemade attempts at food and they're posting it like, hey, uh, I did something wrong. The texture is all weird or something. There are so many groups that Facebook recommends to me of people posting food and talking about food. And I'm just like, I don't want to see this. Why do you think I'm interested in this? Pictures have made me throw up, okay? I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not joking. <laughs> it's difficult. Okay, I'm not saying everyone else has to adjust their social media habits so that I can scroll Facebook, but why do you need to post pictures of like disgusting looking food? When it comes to my first 12 weeks at work, because I didn't tell anyone at work that I was pregnant, so it was uh, super risky and I was feeling sick all the time. I can't believe no one at work noticed that I was eating salty crackers all day and I was just in general having these strange eating habits and I went to the fridge like every hour to get something. But people don't notice your shit as much as you think they do. Like why would they pay attention to what you eat? You know, like people don't care. And also because I started wearing like only loose dresses. <laughs> because I was bloated all the time. So my clothes didn't fit me. I am a journalist. So I, you know, go on interviews and stuff and uh, I had to leave interviews and try to rush through sometimes to get out because I knew that I wouldn't last that long. One time I was at this event and I had spoken to the person hosting it and she was like, well, come find me after the stuff on stage. And after uh, the stuff was, had finished and I was still there, I was like, I'm not gonna get through this but I can't find her. I can't see her, so I can't tell her I have to go. And I also don't know what I'm, what I'm gonna say because I haven't announced that I'm pregnant and I'm not gonna tell all these people. So I just had to go outside and do my business and then go home and call her the next day. And she was like, well, I looked for you, but I couldn't find you. And I was like, oh, sorry. I just uh, thought it was better if I called you today because uh, there were so many people there and <laughs> I didn't wanna, you know, take up your time. <laughs> Oh my god, and she had specifically asked me to find her after. Oh my god. I don't know. I, I just feel so silly making up all these excuses all the time. Like, oh, sorry, I just had to leave for whatever reason. But at least now I can tell people that I'm feeling sick. And most people know someone who has been pregnant, and most people know someone who has probably had a bit of an extra struggle with pregnancy. Most people I've talked to have definitely validated my feelings and understood. It's very hard to be on time for work when you can't time your body, you can't time when you're gonna throw up or not. And if you do throw up, you need, it takes a little bit of extra time to leave the house, especially because uh, brushing my teeth, oh my God. I, I need to open the button, I am feeling so sick. I just gagged very loudly, but I cut that out because you don't need to hear that or see that, it's probably not very pretty. Oh my God, I just realized this is gonna be the first time I see myself gag, because <laughs> I haven't seen it. And now I get to see it on video, woo, <laughs> nice. And then let's talk about social life, which I will cover more in the video where I talk about mental health, because obviously that took a quite the toll on my mental health. Because of my sickness, it was really difficult to see friends and I did tell a lot of my friends early so that they would know that it's not that I just don't care about you anymore. I just physically cannot hang out. I can go to work, do the kind of bare minimum that I need to do, and then I can go home and lay on the couch for the rest of the day. I can't go and see people. <laughs> like it's so, it's so hard. I've gone to restaurants a few times and I've had to like go outside, get some fresh air while we're waiting for the food or like after we've eaten or something. Just, it's so freaking hard to sit there and just think like, please keep the food inside you. It's so stressful. It's not relaxing at all because you have to sit there and always just focus on trying not to throw up. I just gagged again. This is really difficult to talk about, but I think it's important to talk about. Not too surprisingly, I had to go and throw up and I didn't really feel like continuing filming after because I didn't feel so fresh. So we're gonna try and finish the video now. I think I'm just gonna jump over to how exhausting it is to throw up for this long. I don't think anyone can really imagine being sick and nauseous and throwing up 
for months on end and it's not stopping and it happens every day. I don't think anyone can imagine how exhausting that is if they haven't been through it because being sick all the time, feeling sick all the time, it's terrible. I think it's easy to underestimate how much that sucks. It's so hard to deal with and you never feel good. I always feel like I'm about to throw up and I'm always like, if I eat this, will it be fine? So functioning and having a social life and going to work and all of these things, of course, it's super difficult when you're both feeling sick and vomiting and all of that and you're also just exhausted. Even having phone calls I find exhausting because I just don't have any energy. I'm just so drained. I'm five months pregnant in a few months time I'm gonna have to you know take care of a child, a baby, a small baby. We're gonna be the newborn stage which is not easy and I need energy. <laughs> I need energy to be able to do that and I can't save up energy for this. I can't just charge myself up for this event because my body doesn't get a break. I uh, wanted to tell my friends early anyway because that's kind of been normal in our friend group and also I can't keep secrets like if it's my own secret and it's something I'm really excited to share with people I find it really hard to wait and especially when I'm waiting for this like societal expectation that you wait 12 weeks so that you don't have to bring people bad news and I felt okay with having to give them bad news if something happened so I told my friends that I know I would have told anyway if I did have a miscarriage so if I was gonna tell them anyway if it happened then they might as well know about the pregnancy you know and also so like it's really fun to tell people you're pregnant. It's a core moment, you know, like I remember exactly where I was every time I told any of my friends. I remember exactly where I was every time any of my friends have told me that they're pregnant. It's just such a magical thing. But I definitely didn't even have a choice with telling people because I just felt so, I don't know, like guilty or self-conscious or something about not seeing them. Cause like suddenly I kind of went a little AWOL. Like I wouldn't, you know, hit them up to hang out or make any effort. And I didn't want them to think that I just suddenly didn't care about them and I was really missing my social life and I will talk more about that in the mental health video in pregnancy that I will make. It was weighing really heavily on me that I couldn't hang out with them and that I also was fearful that they would think I didn't care even though rationally I knew they wouldn't think that, they would kind of understand that something was going on, but you try to be hormonal AF and also be feeling like shit all the time and be thinking rationally, <laughs> okay? I really wanted to continue to work full time. I work full time as a journalist and I really wanted to just make zero changes. And I also have ADHD and I love having a lot of things to do. Setting boundaries for yourself, especially when you're having some kind of like physical issue or mental health issue, it's really important. I just wanted to like make it through those 12 weeks and then be able to tell people or actually it was 13 almost 14 weeks for me because I got my early ultrasound uh, at the later there's like a window and I got mine at the very end of the window and then I wanted to be able to tell people and it be a, like a positive thing and not having to tell people early and be like well but something might go wrong and I have to tell you this because I feel like shit I can't make the decision to tell you because I'm happy like I don't know I just really wanted to kind of be in control of that if this happens to me again <laughs> I will not be doing this. I do want to have more children and if this happens again, I definitely have to be kinder to myself and realize that, nope, I need to take it easy. I need to, you know, give myself time to rest and time to chill and also take sick leave if I need it. But I instead, I just thought I will push through these 12 weeks. My scan was just before Christmas. So I thought then like it will probably get better because for most of my friends, it has gotten better by that time. But I thought like I'll have Christmas. I have, you know, some days off over Christmas and I'll have that time to like regain my strength and just be ready. And then we can keep going like this. And then I can take sick leave if I need it. I should not have done this at all. And of course I didn't get better over Christmas because my body was exhausted. I just didn't get better. I still haven't gotten better. You know, that wasn't my journey. <laughs> when I finally realized that like towards the end of the Christmas holiday, I was like, shit, I actually cannot go back to work full time because like this is terrible. At my first doctor's visit, which was at 10 weeks, I think, I told my doctor about my hyperemesis or I didn't realize at the time it was hyperemesis. I just thought I, thought I felt like shit. I of course thought it wouldn't last for this long. My doctor prescribed me peridoxin. I don't know how to say it, but it's uh, vitamin B6, which helps some people with nausea, but it did nothing for me. And then I went back to the doctor before my ultrasound where you take in all the details about your pregnancy and your health and all of that. And this was in week 12, I think. I googled this 
And it says it's still cold Fenergan. Fenergan? 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 I don't know how to say any of these things. This did nothing for me either. As you can hear, I did not take most of these. There's like lots left. They made me so fucking tired. So I just thought it wasn't really worth taking them because I don't know if this is an international symbol, but there's a red triangle on all nausea medication because it makes you drowsy. I did take some like travel medicine. It's for like travel nausea, but that also makes me so fucking tired that I just, I feel like I can't just take it at work or something because I it makes me so goddamn tired. And then after Christmas, I called my doctor and I asked her to prescribe me because this is something that worked for one of my friends. Well, it's called like Afipren or something, but it's metoclopramide. It did nothing for me. So at, at this point, it just feels to me that I've just wasted all this money on medicine because like this medicine is not free either. It's not in the group that's free, which is so stupid. But yeah, I called my doctor and I asked her to prescribe me this and to give me like a week or two on sick leave so that I could like try out the medicine and get some rest and just get let my body chill for a bit because I was just feeling exhausted and I just really felt like I could not go back to work. And my doctor did not respond in the way I expected because I kind of expected it to be up to my judgment. Like, should I be working or should I not be working? Because I am in my body and we had also been talking about it at every doctor's visit that I was feeling like shit and that I was struggling at work but I really wanted to work full time like and I wanted to work keep working and all of that so I thought it was just up to me to decide that now I think I should go on sick leave but my doctor did not agree I started crying because my doctor was like well what are you gonna do when you're on sick leave you won't get better by just lying on the couch and I was like are you serious like, what do you want me to do? It was really terrible. I felt so bad about myself. And I just thought, okay, I will let this brew for a little bit. I'll see how I feel about it. A few days later, I still felt like absolute shit about it. Cause I thought that I was being so good, like working, like nothing <laughs> was happening with my body. And I was just, you know, putting so much effort into my work and trying to keep everything normal and all of that. And then she basically just really acted like I was lazy. It made me feel, made me feel horrible. And I'm usually quite good at not letting other people decide how I feel, but the power was not in my hand at this moment. I felt so terrible and so just low. So a few days later, I called the midwife and I was like, I am having a rough time. Can I please come see you? And I'm so glad I thought of or like I knew that I could just contact the midwife and ha get some help from her and I'm so glad that I felt that I could you know ask for help because of course like that's not very easy for a lot of people so I came and saw her and I told her about the doctor the phone call with the doctor and how I've been feeling and all of that and also that the response from my doctor made me feel horrible so she was like this is not your fault you have nothing to feel bad about. Your body is not treating you well. And you know, this is really hard to deal with and nothing is your fault and you have nothing that you need to feel bad about. And of course this made me cry as well because I felt so incredibly validated and that was what I needed because I didn't feel validated. Like I had validated in my head the whole time through my whole pregnancy that I am just really strong <laughs> for going to work and I feel like shit and yes, this is real. Like I am actually feeling like shit and this is really hard and then the doctor acted like this is not hard and you should be able to do this and you should be able to go to work and that's not of course what that's of course not what she said but it's really how she came across <laughs> and then the midwife was just so understanding and so validating and just really wanted me to feel better and uh, she told me about this new medicine that just came on the market last year that was specifically made for hyperemesis and like nausea and pregnancy, which none of these other medications are because why would people invest in medical research in women? That was obviously a joke, but women are just neglected when it comes to research. <laughs> so my midwife was incredible and she went, because I was crying, so I found it very difficult. She was like, you can go and ask, like at my GP, you can go and ask to set up an appointment with a different doctor if you explain that I don't, 
get much understanding from my GP. And she went and did this for me. She went and set up an appointment with a brand new doctor that just got there. Like she just moved there and she just started like that week or something. She went and did that for me. I got an appointment the next day to prescribe me this new medication. And she also extended my sick leave without any questions. She was like, what the hell? Like this sucks. She also was amazing, validated me, um, made me feel so, you know, understood and seen, which is so important and didn't doubt for a second that I was really feeling that way and uh, I managed to switch GPs so that doctor is now my GP and I'm so happy about it oh my god but anyway this medicine is called Sanvia Sanvia because <laughs> it starts with an X I don't know how to pronounce it this is a new packet because uh, I need to buy these every five days because <laughs> there's only 20 pills in each packet and each of these I'm gonna check the price. I need to take four a day. That's the maximum dose. I started off with like a lower dose, did nothing. I'm on the max dose now. It does have an effect. I don't throw up as often. I'm still nauseous all the time and I still, like I still throw up, but it's not every day. I don't even gag every single day, I'm pretty sure. So that's a huge improvement and just not throwing up all the time. That really helps. Okay, so in pounds, it's 22.50 for each packet and in dollars, it's uh, 28. 40 each packet and obviously I have to pay this every five days <laughs> so it's really expensive and I have to keep renewing my prescription all, prescription all the time and I have to make sure I get it so that I have it it's like a whole new different admin that I need to do to make sure I always have it but it's fine it's absolutely not the worst thing <laughs> I'm just so glad I have something that works a little bit it absolutely does not have the effect that I wanted but it does something and that's more than I, at this point, I, I dare not hope for more. So after all the disappointments from the other ones, this one also had that has that red triangle. But the good thing about this one is that it doesn't make me that drowsy. It doesn't make me as drowsy as the other ones. It doesn't make me fall asleep. Like the first one, like actual one that I tried, it made me fall asleep in the couch. Like if we were watching a movie, I just knew that I would fall asleep. So I kind of had to like try and take it when I knew, knew I was going to bed. This one, luckily it's easier to time it because because even though it doesn't make me super drowsy, as it does have the red triangle, I want to be as responsible as possible and I always want to do as much as I can to avoid accidents. One pill is to be taken in the morning, one is to be taken in the day, like afternoon or whatever, and then two at night. So I always take the two at night when I'm done driving for the day and I always take the one in the morning when I've gotten to work and I hopefully don't have to go anywhere for a little while so that I can, you know, at least be there for a few hours and I don't get in my car and then the one that's taken in between here that's usually the more trickier one because I need to take it when I'm like I've gotten home from work and I don't need to go anywhere it's a little bit difficult but it's absolutely fine the most annoying thing is of course how expensive it is people keep telling me all the time like throughout you know when I was feeling horrible people were like well it'll get better soon and it'll get better when you get into the second trimester and blah 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 it has to get better soon and I'm kind of just like well no, I don't want to hear this anymore. I just want to focus on getting through it. I can't really just be focusing on trying to hope, like focusing on hoping that it will get better because what if it doesn't? You know, I just, at this point I've been, I, I've had my hopes up so many times and been disappointed. So I'm just gonna deal with this. I'll survive. It sucks and I can't live my life like I want to. Yesterday I went and saw two of my friends. One has a four month old and one has an eight, eight month old. And I love playing around with kids and messing around with them and rough housing and all of that. And it just sucks that I can't. I can, you know, sit on the floor with the kids and play with them and stuff to a certain degree, but I get sick and like I feel sick. And then I had to ask like, one of the kids' moms to take over. And that is just something that I'm not exactly known to do. <laughs> you know, I am the one who's always like sitting on the floor with the kids and the grown ups are, you know, in the couch talking and stuff. Like I kind of want to play with the kids. I just love kids so much. And it's so weird to not be able to do the things I used to do. This is probably pretty normal to go through in pregnancy because for able-bodied people like me, the privilege of being able-bodied slaps us in the face and wow, we can't just do everything that we want to wow surprised pikachu face <laughs> but it's still really hard to adjust to even though i know not everyone has the luxury that i do in my regular life last weekend i babysat my two-year-old nephew because my brother and his girlfriend were 
the hospital delivering my uh, niece. And of course it was super fun because I love him, but it was exhausting. And I can't, you know, play as much as I want to. I can't do all of the things I want to. And of course I was able to care for him perfectly and he had everything he needed and all of that. But I just want to be who I'm usually uh, with the kids, you know, like I usually am the really fun person, like the crazy aunt that does everything. But I don't want to go complain too much because at least I know that hyperemesis will only last as long as this pregnancy does. So it's not going to be forever. It's not like I'm chronically ill or I have a disability. So of course, I'm still really lucky. I am a fucking able bodied person who's just dealing with some pregnancy struggles. And I'm so grateful that I get to experience pregnancy, even though I must admit, I'm a little worried about doing this again with a toddler because <laughs> I do want another kid after this one. I do want them to have a sibling and I don't know how people do it. <laughs> but hopefully it's not gonna be this bad. There's no guarantee whatsoever that I'll have hyperemesis for fucking 22 weeks next time, but if it happens, I'll just have to deal with it. There's no point in spending energy on that now. Okay, shall we do a little uh, update, shall we? Again, it's a little bit hard to know if I'm in focus or not, but I hope you can see my belly at least. It's definitely growing. I was just at the end of an event. <laughs> I had an event and people kept giving me attention for my pregnancy belly and I like attention. <laughs> In my uh, pregnancy announcement video, I said I didn't expect it to grow this much. And of course I expected it to grow. I'm expecting it to grow much more than this. I didn't expect it to grow, grow that much by 21 weeks. <laughs> That's what I meant. The last one or two weeks, I've started feeling uh, Braxton Hicks, which is fun. <laughs> Wait, like it's weird. It's basically just feels like your uterus just practicing contractions. It doesn't hurt. It's just your stomach tightens a lot. But also this week my partner felt movement for the first time through the stomach. So that's super exciting. Very cute. Very cute moment for us. But yeah, that was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for following this journey. <laughs>